All right, Bash Bob versus Uber Lilith. Smash. Let's go. And here comes the big one. Top, 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 and we can keep chopping. Yeah, 1.5 billion hit right there. You see? Bam! in 100 guys hey everybody it's rob here the bash bob is still hitting for about billions we actually have a rank 26 bash and if you have perfect gear you can have up to rank 30 but yeah it's one shotting all the bosses and right now is the best boss killer for barbarian as you've seen in the intro i'm gonna have the full planner in the description also non-uber version but obviously this one is a lot better with ubers because we are playing the new shot of the run field. I'm gonna go over my entire gear, over my entire setup, over the Paragon tree and the different variants here. And you definitely wanna be playing this new shot and then the best combination is a Starless Guy because else you will be lacking resources. And you see here, I didn't master with my basic skills here. We have the new Pain Gorgers as well with plus eight ranks to basic skills. So for a total of 26 right now, I think you can get 32 bash. So you can get 10 ranks here and you can get another three ranks here. It's uh, it's gonna be quite amazing. And I can uh, get another two ranks on my pen. So I don't have perfect gear or anything yet, but we are certainly working on it. And even though the Bash Tempest has been nerfed, this build is still, I would say from my calculation, it's as about, it, about as strong as last season. So I did some, some rough math here. I won't bore you with all details, but it's basically somewhat similar in terms of DPS here. I have, this is the old damage loss, this is the new damage gain. So you lose divided by four, you get four times damage with Shot of Rerun Steel. And they also buff the Hoda. So you're gonna be uh, looking at around the same uh, data set and around the same DPS overall. And I mean, that's pretty good overall. And uh, we are actually hitting for about billions of damage again. I have uh, some footage here. I think my highest crit was like three, but you can see here 1.8. It's absolutely like one-shotting Duriel, even in four player, you can kill him in a few seconds. And we are doing overpower focus. There might be some better setups as well, but for now I'm doing overpower because it's like the best for boss killing. So this is like a full DPS boss killer build again, link in the description. And I'm just gonna show you the rotation. So we got rid of challenging shout. Just like with the boss killer in season four, we got Call of the Ancients in. This gives us attack speed, which is great for Bash, and it also uh, gives us 25x. It also gives us Fury Rack, and it resets, uh, with the attack speed, it resets our Hectic even faster. So you guys can see here, once we just start bashing, we have uh, Bash to Overpower, we have Bone Breaker, and we have Dominate. We're gonna be like, if I just hit, I'm gonna overpower already, even without having any stacks. And our fury cost is solved because we have eight fury per second on the boots and we have Starless Sky. And if I'm hovering bash right now, you see it costs 25 and we generate 15. But if I start bashing here and then I hover my bash again, we actually generate 15 and it only costs 13. And this is because of Starless Sky. So if you don't have any Ubers on this bash build, when you're playing Shadow of Rerun Steel, I would definitely recommend you craft Starless Sky first. But again, there's a non-Uber version with um, Tusk Helm, etc, etc. And uh, right now I'm using uh, the Turel Smite as well, uh, just for this target dummies to keep the numbers clean, because with Turel Smite you just have all these uh, crazy arrows that you shoot. I'm going to be just uh, using this Rage of Hourglass for like easier testing, but overall Turel Smite is definitely uh, going to be the play here. And it's going to give you crazy amounts of stats as well as movement speed. Really, really helpful. So let me show you here some damage. So basically rotation is very simple. You just bash, right? This is like the basic stuff. Then you start adding the shouts. And then when you have four stacks, you hold out. Just like before, you can also add your seal grass. And then you see there are boom, two billion hits. And the non-overpower uh, non hits are still uh, in the 500 million range. If I keep uh, using my stats here. And they also buffed the overpower from Hoda, so you're getting even more damage. You see here, I'm constantly hitting for 2 billion. 
And uh, one big reason is the 1.4x multiplier that we get here from the new Hammer of the Ancients that has been buffed from 1.3 to 1.4. Again, uh, four times guaranteed overpower for Hoda. And then we are getting guaranteed overpower every 12 and every 20 seconds from the newly buffed Dominate uh, Glyph as well. And we're using Crusher and the bunch of overpower multipliers, which we will go through. And that's pretty much the setup. So we are rocking a Harlequin's Crest, a cooldown masterwork. If you don't have it, Task Helm works very well as well. Uh, then we have Two Elves Might. Again, if you don't have it, you can either play Rage of Hourglass or you play Undying. Rage of Hourglass will only be played for the crit chance, but you can play Undying and uh, Always for defenses. Uh, then we have Pain Gorgeous here. This one has been freshly buffed. It can go up to plus 10. I didn't hit the basic skills. Again, I haven't, uh, I've haven't. i played so many builds already and uh, getting the masterwork materials, even with the new Infernal Hordes, can get a bit difficult to farm them all. Um, then we are rocking Might here for extra damage reduction and obviously the imposing presence is gone. So now we're tempering Challenging Shout, um, which is what we use in the normal builds. Like for Boss Killer, you don't need Challenging Shout, but for, you know, when you're doing Infernal Hordes or you're doing Nightmare Dungeons and stuff, I would say you definitely want Challenging Shout and then you're dropping the three points in Call of the Ancients and putting them into Challenging Shout. That's why it's Challenging Shout. You can also play Iron Skin here and play Iron Skin instead of Challenging Shout, but I like Challenging Shout um, in non all the non-Boss Killer versions. And then we have the Boots here, very important, Fury per second, movement speed. Um, I have Strength here. Obviously, as a Boss Killer, you don't need movement speed. You would want War Cry ranks. Right now, I don't have this, but you can get your War Cry and do up to 50% damage, basically. Uh, if you have all the ranks in it and master work it on the boots. But again, fury per second, really important here to just have enough fury to even start casting. Um, then on the weapon, we have Moonrise. And I have life here. It's okay to have some life, but we basically got rid of most of the life because the game is easy and we just want full DPS. So we have Amethysts here. But obviously, you can also go with Ruiz if you're feeling a bit more on the squishy side of things. I have dodge here, you can also roll life, it doesn't really matter, like it's uh, all is good EHP. And then here instead of vulnerable I would like crit damage, I didn't get it though. Uh, but vulnerable is fine, and then obviously you want to temper the bash, which is now nerfed. So, you know, before we had five times more damage from the, uh, five times more stats from the bash cleave temper. So it's really important because we're using Grandfather and Child of Verunthiel. Um, that we get as high bash roll as possible. I got unlucky here on the last roll and I, I got main stat, which is okay, but uh, I would obviously like to triple crit bash. But it already costs so many materials. And then here we have the Edge Master. And also here, probably the best is uh, double damage. You can have now strength, crit damage, and damage. I just didn't have these rolls yet. Um, but these are still pretty decent. And then we have Edge Master here, Shard of Iran feel. I think it's better to crit the basic attack speed. I just got unlucky on the last roll, I got uh, max resources. But the basic attack speed is in category 2, and it basically allows you to play without rapid. That's why this actually is pretty insane. 50% attack speed is, is basically 50% damage for Bash. And again, this is category 2, so it only stacks with your Carnage on Paragon and with your Rapid. But that's why I completely dropped Rapid and uh, took Edge Master in. And I think if you triple crit this and you even get a GA, like, you don't need Rapid at all because you're already capping out on Category 2. Because you're getting 25% from here, you're getting 18% from Carnage. So 25, 25 plus 18. And then we're getting like another 50 from that. And uh, we're going to be capping out at 93 almost. If you get a great affix, I think you'll be attack speed capped without Rapid. So you can get rid of that. Then we have Grandfather, uh, 660 and double damage, of course. This is um, basically how we uh, mostly get the uh, crazy sheet damage that we have here. We have 1.6 million sheet damage. And we can just keep this up, basically. 1337, lead number. I didn't even see that we had this much. But yeah, sheet damage is, is going brr. If you wanted to. 1.6 per million. And yeah, the additive damage uh, certainly helps with that. And this is uh, also one of the reasons why we produce such high damage numbers. Um, then we have Star Sky. Of course, you want to triple crit the uh, crit chance if you can. Um, I don't have this right now, so I'm missing a little bit of crit chance. We only have 75 right now, uh, because you are not having any crit chance on your Pain Gorgeous. So the crit chance here becomes even more important. Um, same for the ring, you want to crit the uh, crit on the crit. And then also Lucky Hit is very nice here, attack speed would be ideal. But I had main set. And the Lucky Hit Vulnerable is very important here, just to keep up the Vulnerable on Bash. And then we have Adaptability on the Amulet, again heavy handed, uh, cooldown reduction, crit chance. Uh, very good stats. Warcry cooldown everywhere. Berserking. I think I have a bit overkill. I have 350 right now. 
you only need 300, but it's not really a big deal. If you have crit damage or damage while berserking, the numbers are pretty similar. So um, just uh, make sure you have enough berserking and you don't need to spend much in the paragons to get berserking. And then obviously bash always needs to be a maze, we can't change that. And we have X expertise here for 1.1x multiplier with vulnerable. Again, we have exploit and we have this to make vulnerable. And Bash has a 60% lucky hit here with the Starless Sky. So you're gonna be fine, like 60% of the time, 40% chance, like it's very often, because you have big attack speed. Again, Shadow of Rerun Field is basically a Rapid and a Shadow of Rerun Field in one. So it's crazy. Skills looks like this for the boss killer, so we have Bash 26 ranks maxed. Combat Bash for the Overpower Holder. And then we have three here, three here. We have Rallying Cry for Fortify. We have one in each here to uh, proc bleeds. Right now I don't have Challenging Shout, but uh, you know if you're wanting, if you're wanting to do normal runs, you change these three to Challenging Shout, and you change the points from War Cry into Aggressive Resistance and into Raid Leader. But right now we are doing Boss Killer, so we don't really need any defense. We just go full DPS, so no Challenging Shout. Uh, War Cry with the Damage Rune. We have a Booming Voice. One point in Raid Leader, maybe more if you feel like you need it to stay healthy for two Realms Might, but one point for me will do. Um, then we have three in Pit Fighter, three in Slang Strike, don't need Bleeds. We have um, the Steel Grasp, we have Counter Offensive, we have Heavy Handed, we have Wallop, we have Unconstrained, and now I want to talk about the Overpower for a second. So basically they took away the scaling that Bash had with Bleeds and all the other scaling basically as well. So everything is just additive. And the only other multiplier that we can really get, at least for boss killing, is Overpower. So this one gives us a 24x on Overpowers. Overpower base is a 1.4x, a 1.5x as well, plus a bunch of additive, which is another 10% damage or so. And then we are also getting another multiplier in our Paragon with Crusher, because we are using a maze, we're getting another 1.2x. So we're getting like 1.2x. 5 base, we're getting like another 1.15 from relative, let's say. Then we are getting 1.2 from the Crusher. And we are getting another 1.2... 1.24. So we're getting like 2.5 almost triple damage for our, for our overpowers, basically. And uh, that's uh, why we use it. So we use Dominate and we use Crusher. This is like the only way to scale damage right now. Maybe we'll figure out the, the different way, but this is basically for boss killing. So exploit in the starter board, a bunch of life here. Um, then we have Ira here for berserking. It's mainly for damage reduction, again, because we just have so much berserking from our gear now, because we don't need a crit multiplier that uh, it's pretty much uh, irrelevant to max this glyph everywhere. Just get the foy for the 10 DR. Um, we have might for extra damage multipliers here, also for close damage multipliers, carnage here. For the category 2 attack speed. See, I didn't even take this Berserking here. It eats 3 points, but we don't need it. It's just additive. Uh, then down here we have Tenacity. We also have Bulwark, which is giving us a lot of damage reduction. We get 2, 4, 12, and another 2. So we get 14% damage reduction from this Bulwark. And we get the Bone Breaker. So every 12 seconds we guarantee to overpower. Then we have Marshall here. Again, Blood Rage, and I like some duration, Berserking Duration. I also have this, Berserking Duration, very useful. Um, then up here we have Crusher, obviously Decimator because we overpower a lot. And last but not least, Dominate, they buff this. Uh, instead of 30, it's now tw every 20 seconds you get an extra overpower proc. And yeah, that is pretty much what we use and the setup. Again, Bash is pretty insane. You get a ton of uh, single target. You can also... Uh, play this with Rupture if you like. You can also play this with Iron Skin. Again, there is a lot of different um, variations here in the planner. So there's a starter variant. But it's not really that strong if you're just starting out, guys. So um, Whirlwind might be better for farming. This one is good for boss killing. So if you are just starting out and again, you have no Uber Uniques and you are playing, let's say, the... Uh, like the Iron Skin version, or you transitioned into something like this one, Boss Killer, no Uber. And the first thing you want to do is replace one of your aspects with a Starless Sky once you get it. The first Uber unique in this build is definitely not a Shako. You need Starless Sky to properly play Shadow of Iranthil, or you're gonna struggle real big with resources. But again, Fury per second is gonna help you on those boots. And then in the end game, obviously you can play uh, many Ubers 
and many uniques with pain gorgers. There's even some setups that drop pain gorgers, but since it has up to plus 10 ranks to basic skills, which is basically another aspect, uh, it's pretty cool with the cooldown as well. It's just missing. I don't know why it's lucky hit instead of crit chance, man. If this one had crit chance, dude, pain gorgers would be so insane. Um, in terms of potions, I kind of like to use attack speed the most. Just look at your breakpoints and uh, see that you don't have overcap. But usually you only have starter sky, which is 30. You could have another like 20 here, which is 50. And you have another 20 here, which is 70. And then you still have uh, some room because this is category two. So say you have like 70, you get another 15, you have like 85, you're like close to cap. Um, just make sure you're not overcapped. But yeah, that's basically the build, my friends. And uh, yeah, I would say let's just uh, smash this uh, guys here one more time. So boom, big holder. And then once you start getting the big overpowers, there's like you can you can watch your bar like when it happens now, boom, two billion, and you can kind of time this on Duriel, and it gets extremely strong. So yeah, DPS is big, bash bop still rocks, over half a billion every hit, and yeah, just extremely strong. You can uh, kill anything. I, you've, you've seen it in the intro. Uh, like, I don't know, this is like a, a butcher on tier 100, like he just instantly dies, like boom, one shot. Like chop. Chop. You can do the Infernal Hordes, T7, very comfortable. T8, you're gonna take a bit of time, but you can also do that. You can see here, like, on live Duriel, this is 4 player Duriel, we're hitting him for like a 1.6 bar billion damage, and he like instantly is dead. So you can carry your friends, even without Uberish, like as long as you craft a Starter Sky first. And again, you can kill Lilith, you can finish the season, and then start farming some uh, some Duriel and then craft a Starter Sky. And you're gonna be you're gonna be flying here with the Bash Barb. I hope you enjoyed the video, my friends. Again, all the planets will be in the description. Barb is still strong. I don't think it's as strong as Sork or Rogue, but it's still very solid. And if you like Bash Barb last season and you like to play it again, it's simple, it's easy, it's very tanky. Give it a shot. Bash Barb strong. Big sheet damage. And yeah, good luck smashing out there. And get some big damn. GG. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe, leave a like or a comment. I'm also live on Twitch almost every day. So come and say hi.